All right, we are starting day three trial. Carly Griggs murder trial. She is accused of killing her mother. There's video evidence of the home, had a camera. But in concluding day two, I think the only points I think that the the, the defense, if if we're scoring here, scored a small victory. Maybe it could be a victory. It's yet to be seen. Uh, where the judge ruled against the prosecution not allowing certain testimony by a doctor talking about the medication. Where he the, the he says that uh, in a second paragraph, I can't remember what the first one was, but anyway, uh, to the effect that uh, he can't find a conclusion that the medicine made her do it. I guess that's a good layman's term, and I'm pretty uh, pretty much a layman here. Uh, that the medication made her do it. He, there's no evidence that he could say that definitively that this is the cause and effect of the make her crazy because she has pled insanity. I, I'm I'm assuming temporary insanity, and then the defense says they're going to blame it on the meds. That this is out of her character, and you know this is why she did this. But if if that it was a small victory of being able to get that in to where they'll be able to discuss this in uh, day three. Um, but other than that, they were trying to plug away at the. Uh, being on the scene, talking about the body cam, this is the fence I'm talking about, uh, bringing up the, these little points and these little jabs that, that I thought was just irrelevant. Especially after the jury saw the footage of her and her mother coming home. Who cares if they shut the body cam off, right? I mean, that that's what I think. If I was sitting there, I was like, oh man, I don't care if they shut the body cam off. I think we got enough evidence I mean, the body cam of Lewis, Hunter Lewis, the uh, the police officer, was first on scene. You've got the 911 call from play day one. I mean, it was just uh, blow after blow for the defense. But let's see if they have an effect on the outcome of this. If they can hammer away today for the for the the drugs for the medication, the antidepressants, if they're going to have any leeway with that. And again, I do agree with the, the judge at the ruling at the end of day two that he he sided with the defense to let this in. He does not want to see this case come through the courts again if she had a right on an appeal or a mistrial. If certain things weren't let in then yeah so let let the chips fall and i think the the prosecution has a good strong case and so far i think they've they're they're winning this case on the forensics on god the 911 the video footage of the home who cares if the uh the detectives pissed off the stepdad it, I, to, to me i'm i'm thinking this is that's irrelevant um, just the, the the defense was using that, bringing that up. What they he brought it up even during uh, the the direct from the prosecution. But anyway, I think Carly's getting up to say something, and um, I'm just diving into this. So let's see what's going to happen here. And here we go, day three, Carly Gregg's murder trial. All right. Ms. Gregg, the state of Mississippi has uh, completed its, has rested its case in chief. It's now time for the defense's case. It's the court's duty to make sure that you understand that you have, you understand you have the right to remain silent. You don't have to testify. However, you also have the right to testify. It is your choice and your choice alone. Do you understand that, Ms. Gregg? Yes, sir. Have you had discussions with your attorney about that? I don't want to know what they were, but have you been able to talk to your attorneys about that? Ultimately, you can rely on their their advice, but it is your choice, and you and you alone, it is only your choice. Don't look at your lawyer, Ms. Gregg. You and you alone will live with your decision. Do you understand that? Yes, Do you need a few minutes to talk to her about whether or not she wishes to testify? Yes, 
All right. I'll give you all 10 minutes. Step to the back. I don't think she should testify. I don't know. That's crazy. Ten minutes to, to decide a, a huge decision. But it's usually a bad idea for the, uh, the defendant to testify. A decision. Ms. Gray, yeah. you um, keep looking at your lawyers. And look, you, you can listen to your lawyers. But I want you to hear me. You and you alone will make this decision. There are two decisions that you're required to make, whether or not you're pleading guilty and whether or not you're testifying. And at the end of this, only you will live with those decisions. Have you made a decision whether or not you wish to testify? Yes, Your Honor. All right, and what's that decision? I'd like to wait and see what the testimony. No problem. You can decide at any point before your case closes. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. All right, have a seat. All right, anything further from the state? No, sir, Your Honor. From the defense? No, Your Honor. All right, as soon as the jury's in, we'll get started. Wow. Well, that was kind of a smart move. She needs to see how the testimony is going to lay out before she decides. So if, if it starts looking like the defense is scoring points with the psychiatrist and the doctor on the medication, then she can get in, maybe say things like, I felt normal or, or maybe I was a little depressed. And then, then they gave me they gave me this medicine. And then I, I don't know. Everything's a blur. Who knows what they're going to say? You know what I mean? The defense's first witness was a minor, and they cut the audio, cut the visual. Um, I guess that's to do with the state that they're in. Do y'all remember the boy in the box case? Um, I had covered it, um, but they had the, the victim on. They didn't show his face, but we could hear him talking. And hear the questions him being asked. So I'm assuming it's because of state laws that they can't have this minor on there. But um, I do not have the transcripts for that. I apologize. So I don't know what this, who this witness was. If it was the girl or the boy who made the phone call to the mom. I, I don't know. Or one of the kids she texted or had a conversations with. I have no idea. But. This is the second witness, and it is the stepfather being called by the defense, and he's fixing to be sworn in. Now, I haven't seen this. I just got to this part. Here we go. I swear or if I tell the truth, I am the truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Okay. <laughs> Make sure you can speak to the last person in the jury box can hear. Do you understand that you're now under oath and your answer will be sworn answers under penalty of perjury? Yes, I do. Uh, we've lost audio. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on. Y'all remember when he first testified, he was just very, a very odd man minimizing it seemed like the severity of what he experienced and his stepdaughter shooting his wife in the face was kind of bizarre to me personally and it, it came out that he still had been in contact with her now I don't know if they've still letting him because it's during the trial. I know they haven't been letting him come and sit in the courtroom because he was up for recall. Um, but um, I don't know why the sound is off. What's going on here? No. Defendants that fall. Okay, well, law of crime just popped that up in the chat. Okay. Somebody in this chat I read, now I want to put the link in the description. Y'all can watch the whole thing. I mean, it's eight hours. 
So I am going to try to get to the best uh, testimony. Well, I what I think is, um, obviously, I want to hear what he has to say and what kind of questions the defense is going to ask him. But somebody said they couldn't believe that the prosecution had already rested on at the end of day two. Well, their case is pretty much slam dunk. Mr. Smiley, how are you doing today? Uh, all right, I guess. And you testified... Um, let me ask you this. We've heard some testimony from you already regarding the relationship between Ashley and Carly. And you said already that when you first met Ashley and Carly in 2019, uh, until the time of March 19th, that both Ashley and Carly had a wonderful relationship and you and Carly had a wonderful relationship. Yes. Is that true? Yes. Okay. And you talked with the state yesterday about getting married in Gatlinburg. Yes, that's correct. And who who all was there for your wedding in Gatlinburg? Uh, just myself and Ashley and Carly. And we got married on the balcony of one of the cabins up in the mountains. Okay. And were any photographs taken? Yes. Okay. And was that, how would you describe that day? Uh, really good. It was one of the best memories I've ever had. <laughs> and how did Carly, how did Carly appear about you and Ashley getting married? She appeared very happy with it all and she was uh, just her normal wonderful self all day. And uh, was there an occasion after you and Ashley got married that that you guys adopted some puppies? <laughs> yes, we've got two golden retrievers now. Uh, they're running around playing all the time. Okay. And can you tell the jury a little bit about how you got that second golden retriever? Uh, we, uh, we <laughs> actually surprised Carly with that one. We had talked a lot about the first one and got him. <coughs> and decided he needed a buddy at some point a year year and a half later so we had got it all set up to get him and didn't tell her and uh, we said we had to go meet her grandparents pick something up and then we'd go out to eat and we were really waiting on the lady to bring the puppies around to us and she was pretty surprised and taken back with that one <laughs> And on any normal, typical weekend, how would your family typically spend a weekend? Uh, we were kind of in between my parents and Ashley's parents. So sometimes we would go to her, uh, Carly's grandparents' house, one or the other, or we'd stay home some weekends. And, um, you know, she got to see family or she got to hang out with the dogs. Uh, sometimes they, her and her mom, more so than me, would not much on all the movies and stuff. But they'd sit down and watch movies they like together. Um, they like running, going shopping, or something here and there when they needed to. And what, if anything, would would you and Carly do together on the weekends? Uh, video games, some, uh, just random stuff. Uh, she, uh, I was always taking her to like karate and guitar, so she'd sit down and play guitar for us. And you know, she was had a acoustic guitar and electric guitar. We had got her at Christmas one year, and uh, just whatever, try to take it easy. Okay. And do you recall when you and Ashley got married? Yes. When was that? It was June twenty, June thirteenth. Of 2020. Okay. And do you recall about when you and Ashley surprised Carly with that puppy? Yes. When was that? Ooh. I don't know the date on that one. It was, let's see, he's about to turn two next month, so it was right at two years ago, I guess. So, what would that be? September 2021? Yeah. Okay. And do you recall whether or not you guys took any photos? After we Actually, did. When? I guess it would have been 2022. It would be two in a month or so. Oh, yeah. You mean when you got the puppy? Yeah, when we got the puppy. Okay. 
And did you and Ashley uh, have an opportunity to take any photos once you got home with the dog? Yeah, we have, I've got video of him meeting the other dog the first time in the backyard and everything. A lot of pictures of her holding him in the uh, parking lot with the lady that we picked him up from. Okay. Your Honor, may I approach? So we're going down memory lane. I don't know if this is going to help or hurt that they seem to be a loving family. And this little monster killed her mother. Or it's a loving family and Carly was normal until she took the medication. Let's see where this is going. Mr. Smiley, I'm handing you these two photographs. Do you recognize who's in that first photograph? <laughs> yes. Okay, who's in the first photograph? It's Ashley, myself, and Carly. And when was that photograph taken? That was in June of 2020 when we got married in Gatlinburg. Okay. And do the people in, is that photograph an accurate depiction of when it was taken? <laughs> yes. Okay. And with the second photograph, who's in that photograph? That's Ashley and Carly. Okay. And do you recall when that photograph was taken? That same day before we got married. Okay. And is that an accurate uh, depiction <laughs> yes. of what you observed that day? Yes. That's the photograph there? Mm-hmm. It is. Your Honor, I would ask that these two photographs be admitted into evidence. Same objection. Same objection. The objection to remoteness will be sustained in part and overruled in part. The court will sustain the objection to remoteness to this photograph, have it marked D2 for identification purposes only. Do you guys think this is just odd? Him. Um, Oh, I remember that day. It was one of the best days of my life. And he didn't even get choked up. Talking about his deceased wife that he loves. I don't know about y'all, but I have family members who have died before their time. And to this day, you know, some days, some days, even though it's been 14 years... Something will remind me of something, and man, I just have to fight it because I'm still sorrowful for it. But this is still pretty fresh and heinous how his wife was killed. She was murdered. She didn't just die from an illness, a car accident, which all of that is tragic. But this is heinous and uncalled for. But his, his coming across, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. It just it's just coming across as odd, uh, to kind of weird. Just saying. Now either he he's minimizing the impact because he doesn't want Carly to spend the rest of her life in jail. I don't know. The court will overrule the objection as to this photograph. As to remoteness, it'll be marked S three all purposes. I mean D three all purposes. And may I publish that to the jury on it? Hand it to the bailiff. Like I said, this is going to either help or hurt because, well, to some purposes, they were a loving family. I think they're just going to keep falling back on the medication made her irrational and insane. That's all they got. That is all they got. And that's a big, that's a big if they can prove it. That, that the medication caused her to go psycho. Still yet to hear them talk more about the, the weapons and why weren't they secure. I know they talked about she had it under a mattress because she was afraid of her ex-husband. Why would you ever let a kid know where the gun is? Or did Carly snoop in her room and, and know that it was there because she snooped, snooped in the room? I don't know. 
Just, just asking questions. Just curious. She never would have thought in a million years that Carly was going to get the gun and kill her with it. Hey, the defense is sure taking their time with him. And don't take that long to, to put two pictures into evidence. Let's Charlie, go. Charlie, I'm going to hand you two more photographs here. And can you describe for me who's in that photograph? That's Ashley and Carly and our second puppy, Finn. And who took that photograph? Mm -hmm, I did. And about when was that photograph taken? <clears throat> um, I would say maybe, maybe a year and a half ago. Can you give me a month, a year? Um, not sure without looking it back up, but I would say maybe near the end of 22. Okay. 2022. End of 2022. And who's in that photograph there? <laughs> That's myself and Carly with our first dog, uh, Wyatt. Okay. And can you give me a month and year when that photograph was taken? Um, I don't know a month on that one, but it was maybe just over two years ago. Can you give me the year? Uh, I'd say sometime in 2022. Okay. And who took this photograph? Uh, Ashley. And is that a true and accurate depiction, <laughs> as yes. you recall it, that time? Yes. And who took the first photograph? Uh, I did. Okay, and is that a true and accurate depiction <laughs> yes. of you photographed at that time? Yes, it is. Your Honor, I would ask that these two photographs be admitted into evidence. <laughs> Same objection as to relevance and remoteness. Yes, sir. We'll overrule the objection as to remoteness. They'll be... Enters defense next in number. I think the defense is just trying to establish that uh, Carly was a normal, happy person. And then they're going to focus on the drugs. That's just my opinion. But this is weird. How the father is just smiling. The stepdad, by the way. <sighs> Looking at pictures of a happy time. And she is no longer with him. And they weren't married that long. This is 2024. They were married in 2020? 2020, 2021, they met in 2019? That's nothing. They haven't been married that long. Damn. Look, he's still smiling. Damn. I would ask that these two photographs be published to the jury. We would handle the bail. I guess they're passing the photo around, I'm assuming, and, and they're getting to look at it. I don't know. Probably. And he's smiling at Carly. She's probably smiling back. I think it's a bit odd. She, why isn't she crying? She's seeing a happier time. Oh my God. Why did I do this? So they had like what three or four photos to look at. Uh, they are really taking their time with him.
keep thinking she kills her mother and tries to kill him. She calls people over and he I don't know I guess we all process things differently but I can't I, this is insane he is I think he is just standing by her side guys and Heath I have one last photograph for you here oh, can good you Lord. tell me who's in that photograph that's Ashley and Carly and who took that photograph I did and can you tell me about when that photograph was taken that one was taken in June of 2020 when we got married. Um, give or take a day or two. I forgot what day we went on a hike up there. Okay. And is that a true and accurate depiction of what you observed at the time you took that photo? Yes, it is. Okay. I think I'm going to get you to help me pass that to, doc, to uh, Judge Arthur. Judge Arthur, we would ask that that photograph be admitted into evidence. Okay. Same objection. Same objection. Cumulative mark D next to number for identification purposes only. And the guys also remember the 911 call. And he had paid. It was one of the worst 911 calls I've ever seen or heard. And Lewis Hunter's body cam when he arrives on the scene. This is a different guy. I don't know. This is weird. He's like, she tried to shoot me. She killed her mother. She killed her mother. just under a year ago and I believe yesterday you testified that that was an accurate description of the way Ashley looked uh, in physical appearance the last day you saw her alive mm, yes I guess that's reasonable um, and in fact the picture that you just talked about from 2020 actually kind of looks about the same doesn't she it does um, you agree with me that we won't ever get to see Ashley after March 19, 2024, get a day older, will we? Correct. And that's because of Carly's actions? Yes. This picture of Carly from 2020, uh, would you look at her? You identified her yesterday at the, the bills table. Does that look like the same girl you? Yes. She doesn't look any older as she sits at that table four years later? Mm, not really. May I publish that to the jury again, Judge? Yes. Hand it to the bail. So the defense gets on and goes down memory lane with the the pictures of their wedding and, and what a wonderful time it was for him and the puppies and that Carly was so happy and then... <laughs> Here comes the prosecution going, uh, is that what she looked like? And is this the result from what Carly did? He's like, yeah. Like, damn. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> what is that? What look was that? He's like, well, I had to, she asked me a question. You did it. This is weird. He seemed more at ease and comfortable with the uh, defense attorney talking to him. I don't know. Just, I'm not a body language expert, but look, his demeanor has changed. If you can see his demeanor because he's so... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Very... Low-key... Sol solemn, low, very mild mannered, soft spoken man. 
But, uh... Wow. I mean, how much longer can they keep them on? For what? I think the grandparents are sticking by her son, people. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Smiley, isn't it true that yesterday you testified that Carly Gregg is the person who shot you? I think we talked about that the, sh the injury was about six inches from your head. Uh, yes. No further questions, Warren. Oh. Redirect examination. Just briefly, Your Honor. Hey. Yes. Do you feel any differently about Carly now than you did when those photographs were taken? Sustained. Heath, on cross examination, Catherine asked you if Carly appeared to be the same in those photographs that you were looking at as she does right now. Does she? She does to me. I mean, I've aged a little bit. And over time, I think everybody does. Okay. Is there any other way in which you feel Carly has changed dramatically from how she appeared in those photographs and how she appears today? Mm, not really. I mean, her hair is different, obviously, but it was fixed up that day for a wedding. Okay. Thank you. I tend to the witness, Your Honor. May this witness be finally released by the defense. Oh, yes, Your Honor. By the state. No, sir. All right, you're still under subpoena. You're still not to discuss your testimony, and I'm sorry you'll have to wait outside the floor. Okay. Defense may call its next witness. Well, what good did that do for the defense? They couldn't get in. Well, yeah, he's he's sticking by her side. Or how does he, or, well, no, I think she asked him, do you feel any difference towards her? Like, would that impact a jury? And they probably think this is weird. Look what, they, they heard your 911 call. They saw the body cam footage of the first officer on the scene. They saw the live footage feed, well, not live, but they saw the footage feed of the kitchen Hearing the gunshots of what she did, and you don't feel any different towards her. Well, we can already tell. They, I think both sides did tread lightly with him. Now, I did think the prosecution did a good job of saying, is Carly the one that shot you? He's like, yeah. Is, is Carly the one that shot your wife? Yeah. <laughs> what other questions are they going to ask him that's going to be relevant to the case? Other than they've already established that she wasn't like this before from what he said in day one. Where, you know, she he never saw her angry and he never, you know, saw her, you know, be be uh, talking loud or getting upset, kind of kind of stuff. That, you know, I think it's all going to boil down to the um, to the meds people. I think that's what's going to happen. Okay, he wants to get something on the record about the body cam. Body cam videos are typically produced in a uh, proprietary format, so that frankly. Nobody can change them in any manner. That's the purpose of the proprietary format. I understand that the defendant does not have a copy of the video to put into evidence, correct? That is correct. So you have asked the state to have their person go. The only way to do this is to screenshot the actual video with a particular piece of software, uh, and it is quite a lengthy process. So what I told the defense is um, that the state has agreed to do that, correct? Yes, sir. All right. I don't want to waste the jury's time, 
So what I've proposed is that the defense excuse this witness subject to recall. Is there any objection to that procedure by the defense? No, by the state? No, sir. All right, Deputy Shack, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to excuse you, but you're still under oath. You're not to talk about this with anybody. Yes, sir. Uh, the DA's office will be allowed to show you the video that has been copied in your original video so you can compare them for authentication purposes, okay? Yeah. But otherwise, there should be no discussion about the case. Yes, Your Honor. Any objections by the defense? No, Your Honor. By the state? Yes, sir. All right, I'm going to bring the jury in. The defense will excuse uh, Deputy Shack, subject to recall, and uh, then we'll call the next witness, okay? Bring him in. The defense wasn't prepared. They should have already had it made and had the guy review both of them so they could hand it over to the prosecution. What a waste of time. They've had a year to do this. Yeah, this is this is sloppy defense, so I, I, in my opinion. They should have had this ready. It's just a video for Pete's sake. On a thumbnail, thumb drive. Defense have an announcement as to this witness. Yes, Your Honor. At this time, we would excuse our witness subject to recall. All right. Deputy Shack, you're going to be excused subject to recall. That means you will be called back most likely. Yes, Your Honor. You're not to discuss this testimony with anyone at this time. You understand that? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Stand down. Please exit the courtroom. While he's exiting the courtroom, the defense may call its next witness. Your Honor. All right. The defense is going to call their next witness. All right, I had to get out of that hoodie. It's a little chilly here in the mornings, and then uh, started getting a little warm as the day progresses. They have sent the jury out after they brought them back in to release, uh, what is his name, uh, Shaq, Shaq uh, with, about the body cam and the whole camera thing. So now they removed them, and now they had a sidebar. And I thought, I want to listen to this. I, I haven't heard it yet, but he just said that they're going to talk about some medical records, whether this should be done in front of the jury, talk about in front of the jury or not. So um, let's see what's going on. Let me get things going here, and here we go. Boom. I'm going to say this for both sides. I'm not taking another break. If you want something in evidence, you better have a complete copy of it. Go on ahead and show it to the other side. These people are getting paid $25 a day, and they are they are away from their jobs. They didn't ask for this job, and they didn't want this job. I forced them into it. I'm tired of wasting their time. You have 20 minutes. Oh. Oh. Wow. And it's about the medical records, y'all. Oh, man. That is just crazy. The judge is back, and he is a little pissed. I mean, the defense wasted their time. He was saying that it's going to take a long time to process that video and for that guy to review it. Now, I don't know how long the video is. They didn't stipulate how long it was, but... And then this came up. He said, I'm tired of them wasting the jury's time. Let's see what he's got to say. I left the courtroom at 10.06, gave you all 20 minutes. It's actually now 10.44. Do you have copies of the medical records that you need at this time, Mr. Camp? Yes, Your Has the state had an opportunity to view the medical records in their entirety? The medical records, yes, Your Honor. All right. And there's one uh, set of records from the school district as well. All right. Are all, is, are the parties agreeing by stipulation to the admissibility of the records? Of the medical records and the school records, yes, sir. All right. 
Are there any more exhibits that may be needed by either side during this witness by the, that, that we don't have by the state? Yes, sir. Your Honor, I believe that they're going to talk about journal entries and sketchbooks, and they did not have a copy of those, so that's what I was trying to make copies of upstairs. Okay. Which journal entries? Are you objecting to the use of, the, of journal entries? No, sir. Uh, well, we do have a copy of the journal. Right. Did, did you ever turn it over to the state? The state actually turned it over to us. Okay. So are we ready to go by the state? Yes, sir. That's, it, that's the only thing that he's relying on. By the defense. Uh, well, I think there was a page of the sketchbook, and I think that's what Catherine's referring on now. Yeah. So I told her that we would not agree to stipulate to just certain pages. If it was coming in, it was all coming in. And so we were trying to print the documents upstairs. Do we have the documents? Is there another witness that we can take up at this time, rather than leaving the jury out while everybody gets their paperwork together? Your Honor, I, I, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Levinson, just just for the course, uh, I'm not obviously calling anybody, but for the course um, knowledge, Mr. Levinson just messaged me a couple minutes ago, and said that he's almost finished uh, allowing Deputy Chat to review the body cam footage. So I think Deputy Chat should be. Um, Ready to be That's still a few minutes away. Deputy Shack has to watch the body cam video. Does the defense have another witness it can call while the paperwork is being gathered? No, Your Honor. You have no other witnesses other than Dr. Andrew Clark? Dr. Andrew Clark and Deputy Shack, Your Honor. That's all you have left? Yes, Your Honor. Holy smokes. All right. The state is correct and so far as there are portions if there is a journal the state is invoking the rule of completeness so I can't put the doctor on the witness stand until I have a complete set of what's going to what's going into evidence how much longer will it take I, I take the state printed out the medical records for the defense sure, they had some we printed out the rest of them we have a complete copy now can we at least try to get, do the medical records and, and hold the, do you have any idea how long it'll take for all the journals to be printed? Does the defense have all the journals? The defense has a complete copy of a journal. It's just a, a sketchbook. That's do you have a complete sense. copy of the sketchbook? No, Your Honor. Your Honor, Deputy Jack is on his way down now. He has reviewed the video. They can call him if they wish to. And, and Judge, for the record, I did leave uh, one of the ladies in my office has agreed to keep printing those, and they're going to bring down a copy, uh, two copies. Sorry, it was the prosecution that's holding this up. Give the defense the disc. Y'all get over here and make sure the TV works before I bring the jury back in and have to send them back out. <clears throat> I like this judge. He's like, let's go. That, the prosecution should already have that done too. I'll scold them like I did the defense with the, the video. They should have had all that printed out. People, they've had a year to do this. Now they got to make sure the TV's going to work. So they got a Dr. What, Andrew the Clark. Out, if you have any exhibits that you intend on showing with Dr. Clark, go ahead and give them to the state so they can be looking through those. You have the ones that you actually want to offer into evidence, correct? Yes, sir. They're in the journal. And we've agreed to stipulate to both Dr. CDs. So they've got a Dr. Clark and then the. Uh, the police officer shack to come on. And for such a short trial, I know the trial is over. I have not watched the the verdict. I've been going day by day and I'm on day three and just meticulously going through this. Um, they they should have had their crap together. 
Oh, both sides. For such a short trial. And they had a year to prepare. I don't even know. What did this go for? Four, five days? Something like that. I'm not even sure how many days. If there's day four. I'm just taking one day at a time. And Pull Mr. Shack outside the courtroom for just a moment. If he would, if an investigator can get him posted up, though, that would be helpful. Just post him up outside the door. <laughs> He's like, let's go. I mean, let's see. It's already two hours and 25 minutes into an eight, eight hour day. Eight and a half hour day. And they only got two witnesses to get on? Mind, take the exhibit, put it in there, and let's just make sure it plays. Bring that means those, those, somebody's going to be on a super long time, I'm assuming. Which one? Probably the doctor. I don't know how long this video is going to take. Tony Shack back in before the doctor. Uh, you understand that you're still under oath and your answers are sworn answers on the penalty of perjury. Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. Right. Uh, I allowed you to step down for a minute to discuss your testimony with anyone. No, Your Honor. All right, you may proceed. Tony, you were, I think you went upstairs and reviewed the video and we made a copy of the video. Is that is that correct? Yes. And so is this may I approach witness? This is the video that you... That's correct. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, we would ask that this be admitted as defense exhibit. I think it's four. Seven. Seven. I'm sorry. Any objection as to D7 all purposes by the state? No, sir. No. All right. If you would, please bring it up. Let's mark it. D7, if you bring it to the court reporter, we admit D7 all purposes. Your Honor, we would like to publish this to the jury at this time. Yes, sir. Mr. Levingston, would you assist him? <laughs> All these courtrooms are set up differently. This one's a little odd. He is texting while driving. Boulevard. 
We just drove to that goal. She's back here. She's soaking wet. Yeah, we just Did you jump in the water? Soaking wet with that, uh, I guess. How much gun residue could they find on her? Okay. Alright, look. I need you to hold your hand up like this. I'm gonna do your right hand first, okay? Just your right hand. Just like that. 
right here. So GSLR is the day that shows that it's shown. Which hand did you shoot with? Which hand did you shoot with? Flop the hand, turn the hand over. Rub on the outside part around the knuckles. <laughs> Paused it, but the camera had stopped. Why did the camera stop? Right, the camera's not stopped. It's muted. Okay, it's muted. Yeah, it's it, the 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 actual the actual camera in order to to mute it, the buttons right here, so it covers the lens. But it's still it's still active. It's just uh, the it's muted. Okay, and correct me if I'm wrong. Beforehand, when I asked you the question of why you had muted it, correct. My understanding was you said it was a personnel issue. Right. Now we're muted on the video right now. Correct. Right before you muted. Right. You're talking about Carly doesn't know her mother's dead. Objection, Your Honor. Overruled. He, he, he sustained is deleting, but rephrase your question. Yeah. You saw what you said, remember? Right, yes. Was uh, What were you talking about? Right, uh, right then, mean? what I was talking about was, was she never inquired about her mother. I mean, that's why I was saying that, you know, she only asked about her stepdad. Hence, even when she got out of the car, she asked, how's my stepdad? It was never a, uh, you know, she never, like, said, is my mom okay or anything like that. I, I assumed that she didn't even know about her mom, and I didn't know the full details of the case whenever I got there. Okay. So why was it that when I asked you before, you told the jury it was a personnel issue? Right. Well, whenever it was paused is whenever I began talking about the issue with driving around in a circle out there coming back and forth. That's why whenever you replay it here, you'll see another deputy going like this. That's because I was talking about that issue. Now, may I approach your honor? Yes, sir. Yes, don't turn your cams off, you guys. You said you were aware. Are you aware of the policies and procedures of the sheriff's department? I am. Okay. Let me let you have this. Okay. This is a copy for you. All right. And there's a yellow piece of paper, and I believe that's the. It's going to be the first page on. Uh, it's dealing with the. It's a policy and procedures of body cam. I'm familiar. Okay. Now I want you to turn, it says, and it's actually at the bottom of page, it says page one of four. Do you agree with me on that? Or the, yeah, yes. And so you have a number one, it says procedures. And it says when and how to use the 
BWC. That's correct. What is the BWC? Body worn camera. Okay. And so, what's number one? Deputies right. shall not keep body worn cameras activated to their, during their entire shift. Right. And I and I got to correct myself. I said number one. It's a, I said it's A. And, and so that would be A, correct? Okay, A. And then B is what? Deputies shall activate the body worn camera to record all law enforcement activities in contact with citizens in the performance of official duty including but not limited to traffic stops, deputy initiated stops of members of the public, arrest. You may keep going. Yes, it'll be and you're okay. gonna turn to page searches, two or four. interviews and interrogations, warrant service pursuits, and any other contact with a member of the public that a deputy reasonably believes that may become adversarial. Now what's number C say? I'm sorry. The body worn camera shall remain activated until the event is completed in order to ensure the integrity of the recording. Now in this situation, did that occur? At this situation, I was talking about something different. I was not active, actively uh, involved in talking to her. Okay, it says while the event. <clears throat> right, okay. Okay, so you didn't turn your camera off, correct? So C actually would be correct? Right, I could have turned it off, I, I, I guess, instead of muting it. Okay, so number, now read D. Deputies shall not initiate the mute selection any time during the body worn camera is activated for recording. Okay. Do y'all do y'all think at this point is that relevant in this particular case? Now I think further cases down the road, this is the police department, since this has been pointed out, that they should not be doing this. Hold all your opinions to when you're off duty or write it in a report to complain. Because this just raised questions about they're they're trying to establish her mental did she say basically it is you know she's she she did this she's insane she went crazy momentary insanity and she doesn't remember killing her mom but he's saying she she never mentioned her that's that's basically what he's saying that he talked to the other officers like hey she's asking about her dad but she's not she didn't ask about her mom but it does raise the question i i get it and and they they pointed this out from day one the defense and this was the rabbit hole that they were going but i don't know i think it's reaching still reaching now did you do that no i guess my better option would have been to cut it off okay now what do you do if if you fail to uh i guess abide by these rules is there a procedure Sure. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm, a, I'm assuming there is a procedure at, at that point. I'm sure there's a uh, verbal warning. I'm sure there's things such as that. Well, let's get let's get down to number H. Okay. What does number H say? If a deputy fails to activate the body worn camera in situations where recording is required by the sheriff's department policy, fails to record entire contact that interrupts the recording, the deputy shall document why a recording was not made. It was interrupted or was terminated. Now, you did a report in this matter, didn't you? Uh, I don't recall the report. Do you have it? May I approach the witness? Yes. Is this a copy of your report? Uh, yes, that was brief. I'm sorry. Okay, and you, I, I, I'm taking this was done at the at at some time when you got back to the station or something. Right. Well, it's yeah. I mean, date entered. What what was this? This was when did this happen? The nineteenth. Yeah. So a day later. Yes. Okay. Your policy says that you're supposed to make an entry if your body camera is ever interrupted, correct? Uh, that's correct. Okay, show us in your report where you did that. Yeah, it's not there. Okay. 
Your Honor, we'd ask that uh, his report be entered into evidence at this time. Any objection? No, sir. All right, be admitted D8, all purposes. And we would also Hang on a second. I'm oh, sorry. Let, let's get it marked in first, please. Oh, I hope it's all ready. Yes, sir. And, Your Honor, we would also ask that the policy and procedure manual be entered into evidence that he's testified for. Any objection? Your Honor, we have no um, objection to the body worn camera uh, portion of the policy and procedure being entered, but I think what Mr. Kemp has is an entire thing, and I think it would be irrelevant and confusing, frankly. Your Honor, I can take those tape. I can take the. We can have just those. Y'all come modify it and look at it. If you would, please hand that to the bailiff. The only oh, way this is relevant is because he started to say something about Carly's mom and then stopped. But then he says, hey, I was telling, you know, I started to refer to she didn't, she didn't ask about, inquire about her mom, but then he goes on and starts complaining about getting the runaround. But... I think the, what the defense is going for is she was insane and out of her mind at the at the time. Even moments after she left, they find her wandering down the road, and he they're wanting to say that she she doesn't know that her mother's even dead or what she has done. Which is the jury going to buy that? I don't think so. No objection to that from the statement. And, and Your Honor, what we did was we, for the record, we modified it so it's now a five-page document. It starts out with just the uh, policy and procedure manual is, is the first page, and then it goes to the actual policy for the body cam, which is the next four pages. And it's right. listed. It's paid, listed as page number one through four. Any objection to that by the state? No, sir. Be admitted without objection. D nine. It's just to tie into her mental, mental disability at the Does time. Does either side feel the need to introduce the rest for ID? Uh, not of the name, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. And they'll probably say it was the medication that she was on right, that caused her to have a momentary. And Your Honor, I can't remember. Did we introduce judgment? the video? And is that already in evidence? I think it, it has to be. Yes. Yeah. No further questions of this witness, Your Honor. Your Honor uh, that, that's fine, Your Honor. All right. Under the rule of completeness, if a party plays one part of a statement, the other party can demand that any other part of it that ought to be showed to the jury and fairness be showed. At this time, you can resent. Do you want it from the beginning or do you want it from here, from this point? Just from here, Your Honor. All right. Hit play. They can also ask the officer he was talking to, what did he say? Because the other guy was walking up before you saw the hand go over when he was saying Carly's mom or whatever. He said something to the effect of her mother and then his hand's covering it. They they just call in that guy. What'd he say, what'd he say to you? If he can remember because it's been a year. And were any of them wearing a cam? I don't know. Now, how is he going to redirect this guy? Or cross, my bet. Well, she came. I saw her coming out of the Farmington there. I was like, I was like, hey, hey, hey. I said, it's I said, are you the girl that does that? She was just I was coming down Farmington and I looked over there and I saw him. And I'm like, 
And I'm like, hey. And she was just like, this way. She goes, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. She, she was all up there at the beginning of 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 the Any further questions? Excuse me. Any further questions about the defense? Yeah, yeah. Cross examination. Yes, sir. We're, we're not going to need the video anymore, Your Honor. All right. Before you start, Mr. Levinson, would you just mind pulling that back out of the way? While well, she's telling him, "I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry." So she knew what she 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 knew what, what her mom's dead. That right there just says she she knows. Her. I'm so sorry. What's she sorry for? That, that I don't think that bode well for the defense. She already knows. And then when he was wiping her hands for the uh, residue, she says, "Well, I think it was this hand." Like she she was aware of what what got, what hand she used to sh to shoot her mother with. This is not looking good for the defense. That is not looking good at all. I think the, the thing now is the doctor and the drugs, the medication, the, the, the body cam, nah, that's not, that's not going to fly, I, at least in my opinion. I, I don't think it's going to affect the jury. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, good morning, Deputy Shack. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Um, and just want to ask you a few questions about what Mr. Camp um, talked to you about, um, specifically as it re relates to the video. Whenever we first heard the video come on, um, there's a delay in the audio of the video. Can you tell the ladies and gentlemen why there's a delay in the audio whenever the video first comes on? Yeah. Well, it backs up. It backs up where you have video only. Okay. Uh, during a segment there. So, so is that just is that just a normal function of the? Body that is, working? and I think since then they've extended it. They've extended that time over, I think, to a couple of minutes now. So whenever you turn on your video, it just automatically backs, backs up, up, and there's no audio for that. That's correct. You didn't mute your, your oh, no, video no. At, at, at that time. No. Okay. Um, and of course. <laughs> We all hear a dog in your uh, in your truck. That's um, great. Do you have a dog that rides with you? I do. All right, what's his name? Voodoo. Right. Um, and in the back of your your car, we can obviously hear that. Uh, was were Carly and Voodoo separated back there? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, and when it first comes on, I hear you say something uh, to the effect of "up here on the right." Who were you talking to? To her. Was she telling you the directions to her house? Yes. Okay. Um, we also heard you say something uh, to the effect that um, that they've got me out here on a merry-go-round or That's something true. along those lines. Were you frustrated with the fact that they had you out there on a merry-go-round? I was. Okay. And I think you said something to the fact that they told me to bring her here, then they told me to bring her to the station. Yeah, I just kept making circles around a median right. in the middle of Farmington. Um, at any time when you were out there, did you turn your body-worn camera off? No. All right. Um, and you explained to us a little bit earlier, but just again, why would your hand over your camera? Yeah, so the mute button is over here, and it's just whenever you hold it, you, your hand goes it goes over it to be able to hold the mute button in. So that's just the way it, the way it works. Um, at any time, whenever you were in Miss Gregg's presence, uh, did you mute or otherwise turn off your video? No. At any time during this, whenever you were... Uh, Dealing with any member of the public or any suspect, did you turn off or mute your no. body worn camera? No. Did you ever go in Miss Gregg's house that day? No. That solved that problem. Did Miss right Gregg there. ever say anything to you or ask you anything about her mom? No. All I got was her stepdad. Okay. Um, what she asked you about her stepdad? Is he okay? Did she ever ask if her mom was okay? No. I never got anything about her mom. Never said anything. No. Um, did she tell you that she fired with a pistol? Yes. 
She tell you she fire with her right hand? Yes. Whenever, whenever you muted your camera, um, who were you talking to then? Uh, I was talking to, to a couple other deputies. I mean, I, their names. I mean, Deputy Centel and Deputy Decel. Okay. Centel's the one that had his hands up beside him there. Okay. Um, did you ever collect any evidence at this scene on March 19th? No. Um, once you took Carly back to the scene, what did you do after that, if anything? No, nothing. Talked to talk to uh, talked to coworkers and waited for somebody to come and get her to transport her. Did you transport her anywhere after that? No. So once you dropped her off there at the scene, you observed the GSR uh, kit being taken. That's it. You were done after that. Done. David Shack, just to be clear, um, were you trying to hide, conceal, or cover up anything? whenever you muted your, related to this investigation, whenever you uh, muted your body-worn camera? No. And why would he? What would his motive be to do that? He just picks her up. He doesn't know what's happening at the scene. He. I mean, think about it. Why, why would Real briefly, he? Uh, Deputy Shaq, whenever, um, did you have your body worn camera on whenever you first encountered Miss Gray? No, I did not. And why was that? Well, because when we came, when I came off of Old Fannin Road onto Farmington, it's a one way in, one lane both ways. It was right around five o'clock traffic. There was cars in front of me. There were cars behind me. I was driving down the road. I just, I, I spotted her to my right. I immediately put my car in park and hopped out. Uh, and I asked her. There were cars backed up behind me at that point. And I asked the brief question that I did to her, and then I immediately put her in my vehicle. Uh, I activated my camera whenever I was driving due to the fact that, I mean, honestly, I mean, I'm not perfect. At the moment, I did not activate it because I was in a hurry to get out there to her, and I had a lot of traffic. And is it fair to say that you were shocked to see her standing there on the side of the road? That, that's correct, yes, because we had people ever driving around everywhere looking for her. right and you said that you asked her the question um that you did and that you're talking about you asked her if yeah you, i just asked her if she was the one involved okay at this at, at the incident that occurred at the house and she told you yes correct? yes i'm sorry it's my stepdad okay and she told you that she was sorry and that's what you also put in your report that mr camp showed you this in evidence right that's correct yep yes other part of your Let's see what that redirect's going to be. Let me make sure I, I'm clear. You're not saying it was okay for you to mute your body cam, correct? Do what now? You're not saying that that was okay. Are you? I don't think he. I felt said like that. at the time when talking to coworkers, it was okay. <laughs> okay, so and you were. We just read policy and procedure to, that's correct and it says you are not to do that that's correct and it says the reason why you're not to do that is to ensure the integrity of the recording correct that's correct okay and that didn't happen correct what didn't happen you didn't keep it activated to ensure the integrity of the recording right yeah it was activated during my time of dealing with the situation but when talking to co-workers no it was not Okay. And you told the jury that it was a personnel issue. But right before your questioning or right before what you're talking about right. is you make the statement, she doesn't even know what happened. That's on the video. Okay. And then you mute it and you put your hand over it. So why is it so important if according to you... Mm -hmm. You just don't want us to hear it because it is a personnel issue, according to you. That's correct. And then you put your hand over it so we can't even see who you're talking to. Why is that important to, to make Well, it so wasn't purposely put my hand over it. The mute button is on the side right here, and that's the way I was holding it was like that. It wasn't purposely done like that. Okay, so the video, even though you mute it, 
That's correct. And then we can't see who you're talking to. That's right. Okay. And you said it was a personnel issue. That's correct. But it wasn't a personnel issue right before you muted. Correct. No further questions. Right. Madam witness, be released by the defense. Oh yes, Your Honor. By the state. Yes, sir. All right, can you stand down. You're free to go, with state. Thank you. Defense McCullough's next witness. They ain't bringing him back at all. Your defense would call Dr. Andrew Clark. Dr. Andrew Clark. They're going to call Dr. Andrew Clark for the next witness, and this is going to conclude part one of day three. Now, what are they establishing? Man. Guys, this is this is a huge stretch. I know what they're laying down. I, I well, my little brain, my little mind full of mush is thinking they're trying to establish an insanity plea. She's insane at the, the time of the incident. Because he turned his camera off right when he said something about Carly and mother, that triggered that. That triggered that, that that would prove that she's insane. That he, if, if she was saying, I don't know about my mother, but according to him, she, she's just talk, asking about the dad. And at that moment too, and let's, let's just put ourselves in his shoes. Would he be thinking way ahead of the game? Like, I'm going to just shut my camera off and say this so it, it doesn't help her defense. Would, that would be a conspiracy on his part, which I doubt that's what his intentions were. I mean, he would have to be already thinking this. Well, I'm not perfect. I didn't turn my camera on when I jumped out of the car and I'm in the middle of... Uh, rush hour traffic everybody's coming home from work she's standing on the side of the road i see her i just put it in park probably put his lights on and he got out and got her put her in the car i want to know why she was soaking wet i mean how the heck was she jumping somebody's pool what, what's going on with that but uh apparently her getting wet didn't take off the residue off her hands because they found it on both of her right and left hand uh the gun residue from her firing the weapon and while she's standing there getting her hands done she's like well what's this and he says oh the, we're testing for gun residue which hand did you use and she goes oh i she's saying oh i understand i think it was this hand so she's understanding she and then she, the the officer uh shack was saying well she kept saying um i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry She, why was she asking about her dad? Does she know she hit him? I mean, he's grabbing the gun. She runs out because he's grabbing the gun from her. He, he's tussling with her. She did not hit her mark. Is he still alive? I mean, is that why she's asking? I'm just hypothetical, just asking questions. I mean, was it? it let, let's see what was going on in her mind. How bad is he injured? Did I hit him? Did I shoot him? Maybe she was inquiring that way. I don't know. Just because she's asking, how is he doing? What, does she have more concern over him than her mother? I don't know. It's yet to be seen. There concludes part one, day three, Carly Griggs murder trial.